live from the FIA Barcelona Gran Via Conference Center in Barcelona, Spain. It's The Cube at HP Discover Barcelona 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, HP. Welcome back to Barcelona, everybody. This is theCUBE. We've been here now for uh, two days. We're going wall-to-wall -wall coverage for three days here at HP Discover. And uh, this is our nth, I can't even keep track of them anymore, HP Discover, documenting the turnaround of HP. We're going to talk about information management. David Jones is here, he's the senior vice president of that group, and he's joined with uh, Scott Baker, who is in the product side. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for coming Thank you. On. Thank Thanks you. for having us. David, good to see you again. Scott, I think this is your first time on. It is, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It's great. So, David, I wonder if you could set up uh, the organization. We just had Colin Mahoney on, sure. and he was talking about the balance sheet. Data, it used to be that data was looked at information as a pure liability. The general counsel said, oh, we got to delete the data, you know, it's expensive to keep, and all of a sudden this big data meme hits and the bit flips, but you still have that tension in organizations, and, and that's really kind of what, what you guys are, are all about, is helping customers manage that. So I wonder if you could just describe the organization and the, and the mission. Sure, sure. We talk about it in uh, really two parts. Um, it's, it's all part of the big data solutions group. So at HP, you know, our belief is that big data is more than analytics. I mean, analytics is what everybody's talking about. It's sort of the, you know, the sex that gets everybody, you know, into the conversation. But honestly, if you think about the problems with big data, they really start with, you know, how do you gather it? How do you manage it? How do you access it? How do you keep it secure? Without that taken care of, you know, everything else that happens upstream is you know is, is really not going to amount to much, and so what what we do in the big data solutions group is is work on the information management and governance aspect of it. So part of it is you know managing and keeping that secure. That's the information management component, um, and part of it is uh, you know how do you you know how are you compliant? You know how you know if you have legal issues, you know how do you mitigate those legal issues? How do you mitigate risk in the organization? So there's two pieces of it. Yeah, so there's there's tension there, right? Because on the one hand, I want to keep everything if I'm a big data guy, because I want to analyze it, get insights, and act on it. On the other hand, if I'm a general counsel, I want to delete everything I can oh, really so I don't get sued. So, what are you guys doing? What are the conversations like with customers these days? Yeah, uh, well, I mean, your, your point is a very good one, right? Is, is that uh, it, it really, it, it's, it's different within the organization, and it's different between organizations, right? So a law firm, is going to be very different from a financial services firm. That's going to be very different from, uh, you know, an auto manufacturer, a, you know, retail, a drug, right. retail, you know, whatever it might be. So, you know, what what we look at and really what we bring to it is is policy, policy based on information, not metadata, but truly the information itself. That's what we do. That's different than anybody else. When you're talking about policy, we believe you really need to get down and understand at an intimate level the information that's contained within it. Because that's the only way that you can really make good decisions, and policies are decisions that are made. But you have to be able to abstract those. You have to abstract it at the information level. And that's what we do that's different. And we do it on the information management side, so backup, archiving, you know, how long do I keep it? What do I manage as a record? What, what are my deletion policies around it? And then how do I prepare for inevitable you know, litigation that might happen, and if that happens, you know, how do I produce the evidence in a way that is, you know, friendly to the courts? You, you, David, you made an emphasis, not metadata. I'm talking about the data. The you data itself. not metadata. Well, I mean, metadata is helpful, right? But metadata really doesn't tell you what's inside right. the information, right? It's not going to give, it's, it's, it's going to give you basic information. You know, who owns it, when was it created, when was it modified, what are the size, what's the, you know, what, what's the, you know, the format or the structure of the data. So it gives you lots of information. But that doesn't really tell you, you know, what is my risk in this information? Or, you know, is the information actually active and related to things I'm working on, even though I haven't accessed it in a while? Do I want to keep it around in an active data set? Or can I take and I push it off into an archival? You got to crack into the data. To you really need to understand the data itself, right. the information. And that's what we do that's different. We do understand the metadata. But we believe you really need, and, and we'll let you set policy around it but we really believe you've got to go deeper than that. And it's the information content itself. It really is, is the heritage, you know, much of this is the heritage of, 
you know, the autonomy acquisition with Idol, and then together with Vertica and the Haven platform. You know, that that's sort of the guts. That that's the uh, you know the, the, the secret sauce. The foundation. I mean, yeah. It's the foundation on, on which yeah. it's built. Because between those two, you cover all the different data types, mm -hmm. and you have very rich, you know, analytics capability. So Scott, I wonder if you could talk about the product portfolio. Sure thing. In the group, and anything specific at the the, the, the show this week. Show. All right. So you know, building on what David had just shared with you, the focus for us is really on that information. So I think the big data itself, the way that it was defined in the market initially, is really shifted because all data to me is big. Just as you said, there's this dichotomy between do I keep everything or do I delete everything to protect myself from risk. So at the show, we're really focused on three specific products. There's the core backup uh, protection and recovery solution that we have, Data Protector, uh, that's all built around the analytics piece. And we believe in the market, there's a ton of backup solutions that are out there, but no one is really focused on how you analyze that environment. So how do you take the information that's occurring on a day-to-day -day basis, give hindsight so that you can resolve issues very quickly, give you a very dynamic sort of uh, view or real-time view of the information from plugins and extensions that we offer to things like HP Operations Manager, Microsoft SCOM, uh, you know, interfaces themselves, and then how do you use that same information and capabilities of the underlying infrastructure to do forecasting and trending? For example, uh, if I bring on a new workload, where's the best place for it to fit on my physical infrastructure? Before you just throw it in blindly and then find problems later on. So as we look at that analysis piece, and we think about the records management, the overall use of the information, we wanted to extend that to our end users. So one of the other products that we're releasing or we're talking about here at Discover is our HP Connected MX product line. This is for the endpoint based or mobility or mobile information management platforms. So it's based on top of our endpoint based backup solution HP Connected, and we've enhanced that and extended it so that the focus is now on dealing with information that is truly mobile from the laptop back to the core data center, how it may be synchronized into a cell phone or a tablet, and then how that might be shared with individuals within or outside of an organization. And the focus is really about delivering solutions to the enterprise that allow them to analyze the overall backup recovery, the, the future needs of that particular piece of information uh, based on the individual components uh, that, that make up that, that file. Okay, did I miss one? So I got the backup piece, which is Data Protector. You got this HP Connected MX. That's correct. And the third? You said three. Oh, Live Vault. Third one was Live Vault. Live Vault. Live Vault. Yeah. Oh, okay, right. Uh, also server data protection. Maybe just to pick up on a point that, uh, that, that Scott was making, you know, about Connected MX is a, is a good example of how, how we use information, not metadata, but information to make decisions. So Connected MX, Connected MX is, is the next um, version of a product that's been in market for a while called HP Connected. And HP Connected is, is always been thought of as laptop backup. In fact, it's the it's the leader sure. by a large margin, you know, in, in the market for that. Um, but if you think about the world in which we live today, right? The world in which we live today is is not me and my laptop. It's it's me and all my mobile devices, including my laptop, and access to all of my information. So, what in that world is really data protection? Well. It's, it's not just about I've corrupted a file or you know, I've got a virus or I've accidentally overwritten my file or lost my laptop, I need to get it back. That certainly is, is an application, but it's, I'm in an airport departure lounge and I need information to certain corporate assets. How do I get that, right? I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on an airline, I've got my tablet, I'm at a customer site. You know, it really is mobile information management and part of mobile information management is the ability to recover from something bad that's happened, you know, virus, you know, corruption, you know, overwritten file. But part of it is simply, and, and that's, that's all access, bring it back to me. But part of it is really being able, from a corporate standpoint, to set policy around, okay, so he's that guy with that role accessing this piece of information, which has personally identifiable information, what then can I do with it? Can I share it? Can I download it? What network am I coming across? What device am I going to, you know, am, am I actually accessing the information on? All of that's information that from a policy perspective, we put in the hands of IT to say, well, figure it out. Figure out what works for you. But for that to work, you've got to know about the infrastructure. 
right? Um, which is, you know, easy enough network, uh, you know, access type, those kinds of things, access device. But you also need to know about, well, what's the information? Is it, does it have personally identifiable information? Does it have confidential information? Are there, you know, are, are, there, are there things, you know, in the information itself that would tell you you can or you can't share it with somebody else, download it over an unprotected network, put it onto a mobile device. It's really at the information level. So the, the mobile example is interesting because that's the most challenging. When you think about information risk, <clears throat> risk by its very nature is distributed. It is. On mobile devices and laptops. And, so how do you attack that problem? Uh, uh, the example I'm thinking is, I don't know what I don't know. And there's a, maybe there's a legal hold. Sure. And I need to know right, who's got what. Sure. And, 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 and so it, does, does the uh, uh, connected MX it fit into that and how so? Absolutely, absolutely. So, so here's where we sort of flipped the problem on its head and said really data protection is not about backup and recovery. Right. That's an aspect of it. It's really about the information itself and what you can do with it. So, so what we've done with connected MX is, is um, we use the backup process, and when you think about the backup process, the backup process is you know, a highly secure, very efficient way to transfer information from where you've created it to someplace else. That, that's really what, what it is. We call it backup and recovery today, yeah. but that's effectively what that does. But if you think about it differently and say, okay, so as I've done that, really what I've done is to create an information hub. And that information hub becomes then the access point for all my various different mobile devices. From an IT perspective, that creates, to your point, that creates the risk. 27% of all corporate information is contained on edge devices, right? So there is your risk. Now I've got it in my pocket. I leave it at a restaurant, as I did last night. Right? Oh, no. so, so you have all the, you, know, you have all these, I got it back, but, but you have all these things going up. What we, what we do is we give IT the the ability to then create policy around it, right? So what can I share, what can I download, what can be on this device versus that device? So, so, so that's how, you know, that's what we do. And you mentioned legal hold, another great example. You know, usually what happens in an IT department when legal hold comes down is they turn green, because the first thing they have to go do is go physically recover somebody's laptop. It may not be possible. They might not be where they can get at it if, they have some idea of what's going on and they're part of the wrongdoing, there may be other reasons that they can't get at it. But you actually, IT actually has that asset. It's their backup data set, it's their information hub. And so through Connected MX, you can place legal hold on that asset. You can do early case assessment on that asset. You can identify information custodians, the people who would have access to this kind of information based on the kinds of files that have been included in backup sets or have been shared with other people under those policies that David talked about. So I like that concept of an information hub. It's, it's powerful. Uh, and you have a lot of knowledge about the, the entire enterprise. I mean, assuming it's been backed up, which most enterprises are backing are. up. Well, enterprises are, laptops are often not. Yeah, okay, so that's a that's a potential blind spot for organizations, but so but you can help solve that problem and close that uh, The the question I have is around that notion of information hub. You've got knowledge of all that information, who created it, when it was created, where it lives, how many copies there are. How do you, or can you use that knowledge in a way to help me drive efficiencies, help me be more agile? Yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, I, I think of it as a catalog of, that is the place that all knowledge of the data lives. Absolutely. Okay, so absolutely. talk about that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. So, 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 to your point, it is where knowledge is created in an enterprise. That, that's really where the thinking goes on and it's captured on those devices to contain an information hub. So, for instance, Connected MX is integrated with Haven On Demand. Haven On Demand is a rich set of tools that allow organizations, be they end user organizations, you know, bars, systems integrators, to write scripts to be able to get at uh, and, and, and build different kinds of information access. So we have a company, a systems integrator, that is building a knowledge management system. They're a professional services firm. They're building a knowledge management system to be able to mine all that information and allow their, their uh, you know, uh, employees around the world to figure out who's worked on this kind of a case, who's worked with this customer, who's worked with these, you know, these rules and regulations. You know, without having to ask questions, but rather querying, 
knowledge that exists at the edge. That's an example. Yeah, and, and I can see sort of a roadmap for how you might even apply that to solve other problems across HP's portfolio, sure. not just in the Absolutely. backup and archive. Absolutely, space. absolutely. And that, and that's the how do you know how do you mine it for value? Yeah. That same that same technology, but turned a different way, which you know in the the, the legal context is how do I assess my risk? Well, it's the same technology. Well, what have I got? Somebody's using it to find and create value. Somebody else is using it to mitigate risk. So where does that knowledge live? Inside a data protector? Or is that it lives inside Connected MX, yeah. um, which is uh, you know which, which is the distributed file system that's yeah. out in the cloud or it can be on premise uh, and access through a set of APIs through Haven on demand. The same principle that we were just talking about, the same principle that we we're talking about for Connected MX and edge data. Um, also applies to information contained on server data, right? right? So, most of the times when I'm talking to uh, you know executives at, at organizations about big data, their eyes light up, and they definitely get. If I could get at that information, I could gain business benefit from it. But then you get into well, but how do I connect to all those different pieces of information? And if I could connect to that information. How do I do it in such a way that I don't bring the production systems down to their knees? Well, think about it. Same principle in Information Hub. I backed up an archive, all the information in my enterprise that's important to me. So I've already solved the problem of how do you access the information, and I've done it in a lazy store. Something that I only need in case of disaster. Right? It's not mission critical, so I've solved the problem of production data. What, what we do then is that, that backup and archiving data then become sources of information throughout the enterprise for the same kinds of things mm -hmm. we talked about with Connected MX. Excellent, all right, we're out of time, but uh, I'll give you guys the last word. Scott, let's start with you. Just kind of summarize HP Discover, you know, 2014 Barcelona, um, whether it's customer discussions, product innovations, what's the bumper sticker on the show? Well. I think the, my favorite one that I saw that I don't see uh, anywhere here was Pure Haven was one of my favorite slogans that didn't quite make it. So certainly big data changes everything is what we are certainly talking about here. As we look at the customer conversations, uh, what I'm finding is it's really a connection opportunity uh, to folks like David, myself, and the other product managers. Where we, they know we're behind the scenes, but they don't get a chance to see what we're actually working on and actually see the vision that we're talking about. A focus on the endpoint-based devices, as David had mentioned, policies, being able to give true control over the information uh, to the enterprise without sacrificing those end-user conveniences that I, myself, look for uh, when it comes to working with IT. Uh, on the enterprise side, really getting harder into the, the integration, the analysis of the information itself on the back end to help people make more strategic decisions versus responding to very tactical fires that they have to put out. It's really where we're at. That reminds me of what Meg's keynote yesterday. She said, uh, public cloud gives you convenience, private cloud gives you confidence. You guys are kind of in the confidence business. Yeah, <laughs> you know, absolutely. Yeah, so absolutely. Give, me, give me the summary, your summary on uh, Discover. You know, to, 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 to me, what, what is, uh, you know, what, what's wonderful is just looking around the show floor, going to different booths, it, it's innovation. It, it really is innovation. It, it's, it's different ways of thinking about problems that our customers have um, and bringing innovative solutions to them. What I love about what, what Meg's done with HP is, is you know, there's a very strong belief that, that one HP together, right? So hardware, software, services, those things together um, bring better solutions to customers. And I think what you're starting to see on the show floor this year, as opposed to prior, is the different groups working together. We work very closely with converged systems, very closely with storage to bring much of this innovation to market. So you're starting to see a lot of that happen. That's what gets me excited about. Yeah, we've heard that innovation theme several times you know, throughout this show. Um, Meg mentioned and, uh, uh, yesterday, and obviously in the earnings call, HP spending more on R&D, 10% over last year. HP getting back to its roots in vents. So gentlemen, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Thanks, Thank you very much. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back. This is theCUBE, we're live from HP and Discover in Barcelona. We'll be right back.